Welcome to the Money Answer Show with host Jordan Goodman. Whether you are starting out, deep into your retirement, or somewhere in between, the Money Answer Show has the know-how to help you. Now here's your host, Jordan Goodman. Welcome to the Money Answer Show. This is Jordan Goodman, your host. My guest this hour is Valentino Sabuco. He is the executive director and publisher for the Financial Awareness Foundation. Welcome to the Money Answer Show, Valentino. Thank you, Jordan. Looking forward to our conversation. Thank you. Just give a brief history of your uh, evolution and how you created the foundation. Let's see. Um, a little bit about my background is uh, I'm a um, San Francisco-based uh, second-generation native. Um, we created the uh, Financial Awareness Foundation to significantly improve financial awareness and literacy, dealing with this significant lack of financial awareness and literacy epidemic. Um, we're serving as a non-political financial awareness advocate for the general public, we the people, the financial service professionals, the financial product providers, and their organizations, nonprofits, educational institutions, municipalities, employers, and the news media. Okay. So uh, that's good. That's about the foundation. But just a little bit of your background leading into creating the foundation. Well, let's see. Oh, over the last 40 years, I served as a, a professional and um, um, business executive pioneering the fee-only personal and business financial planning profession versus a practicing professional and a principal of several CPA firms then in private practice, which time we were advisors to family offices, wealthy individuals. Uh, we kind of invented or came up with the concept of group financial planning in the um, 1980s. Uh, we sit on a number of boards. I've had a syndicated column that we retired from last year after 14 years. Um, been a public speaker on the subjects, and I'm a certified financial planner with a very, very low um, uh, number um, from the College of Financial Planning. I earned okay. my Bachelor of Science degree or Bachelor of Science uh, in a business administration uh, with an area of emphasis in accounting and a minor in, U uh, in economics from the University of San Francisco, USF. Very good. Oh, let's get right to it here. So just give us a sense <clears throat> of the size of the problem of financial literacy and is it getting better or is it getting worse? People becoming more literate or less literate? Well, it's it's a significant, not only domestic, but international issue. Our research tells us in over 45 years of on the street experience with real people just starting out to the altar of wealthy, um, that young people, middle-aged and seniors know they need financial knowledge, but aren't quite sure where it is. Uh, most people are never taught the essential principles of smart money management um, at home or school, and they're provided with very, very little knowledge in this, um, even in professional courses that go along to designations of different professionals in this space. This leads them very vulnerable to become victims of many of the everyday financial decisions uh, that we all make. Um, which jeopardize almost every aspect of our lives, um, including our health, our well-being, our financial security, and the hopes of financial independence um, and having an adequate requirement. Right now, um, without this empowerment, uh, people do not have the critical tools to make informed everyday money decisions throughout their lives. This is a big part of the reason why the majority of people who reach the age of 70 are basically out of money. Um, there's a good probability that um, the majority of people on this call are going to live to be 70, 80, 90, and maybe many of us living to be well over 100. Um, so if we're out of money at 70, that's not very good uh, options of going forward. We become then reliant on family and friends and uh, local nonprofits. Uh, than the ultimate safety net, which is the federal and state government. 
Right now, we've got excessive debt that's destroying individuals and families. The average student graduating from college this year is graduating with somewhere around $37,000 in student loan debt. If they're going on to med school or law school, um, that debt can be 150, 200,000 or more. Um, that's not a good way of starting the uh, life. Well, what the is United- the direct co- correlation, said Valentino? The direct correlation between having more financial knowledge, learning these things earlier, and having enough saved up in retirement, not getting into too much debt, kind of positive outcomes instead of negative outcomes. If you're better educated. Well, we've, we've, we've found that there's um, a collection of essential principles, about 75 of these. Um, and these essential principles are things that aren't necessarily taught in home and school. Um, an example of one of those principles is the compound interest and the time value of money. If, if I could give you a check today, uh, Jordan, for a million dollars or a check for a penny doubled every day for the next 30 days, which check would you take? Penny. <laughs> when, when we ask that question, um, most people, 70 or 80% of people will take the million dollar check. Um, but a penny doubling every day for the next 30 days is almost $5.4 million. Yeah. Now, that concept, if people don't quite understand that, um, they don't really understand student loan debt. They don't understand credit card debt. They don't understand a mortgage. They don't understand saving for retirement. They don't understand advanced um, technical tools that are used in the state and financial planning like charitable lead and charitable remainder trust. If we could get young people to begin funding a Roth IRA when they get their first job at age 17, and they were able to see that as a family priority where all family members would make sure that they maximize their Roth IRA from age 17 to age 30. That's 13 years. Um, if the child uses those funds for other means, families can help contribute up to their earned income. And the limits right now are $6,000 a year. So from 17 to 30, if $6,000 a year could be put aside for that child's Roth IRA, and then no more payments were made from 30 to 65, there's a high probability at 65, the child would have a couple million dollars uh, set aside for his or her retirement. Wouldn't it be neat when we were 30 to know that we're going to be a multimillionaire at 65? That's assuming what kind of rate of return on the money? That would be an 8% return, which is a couple points below what the S&P 500 has been over the last 90 years. Um, In addition to that, if that child waits for one year to start that same program, um, they would have about $150,000 less. If they started the same program at age 30 and put together the same savings for the next 13 years, they'd have about a quarter of the wealth that they would have had if they started at 17. So that means that those of us that started later uh, doesn't mean we won't be financially independent or can't be financially independent, but it's just taken a large option away from us. Yeah. Um, so this is, this is true in thinking, not only as it relates to saving for a Roth IRA, but in how we spend. Uh, we're bombarded with... 14,000 advertisements uh, or images each day of buying this product or this service. Um, when we did this program with uh, and for the graduating class of the University of Miami School of Law through a uh, alumni group that were financial professionals, we found that um, a lot of the kids were drinking coffee. So we teased them and asked them how many of those had a cup of coffee each day and everybody raised their hand and several had three or four cups of coffee. And so we said, you know, if you could take one of those cups of coffee, a $3 cup of coffee and put that toward your savings at age 70, you'd have an extra million dollars. Now, wouldn't that be neat? Wouldn't that yeah. affect the quality of your life? Well, if, if you didn't know that, then our system didn't do a good job of educating you. If you did know that and you opted to have the extra coffee, you made a lifestyle decision. We yeah. think most people are making 
uninformed financial decisions, and hence we're having this financial illiteracy epidemic. Now, there are schools, there are several states that require some kind of financial course before they can graduate from high school. Um, is, are things getting better? Is there a movement towards financial literacy that's helping? There is, but it's still difficult. Less than um, a third of the states require um, personal finance to be taught in K through 12. Um, and those states that are teaching classes in K through 12 are being taught by teachers and teachers aren't necessarily financially literate. And so teachers have to be taught to be able to teach financial literacy because financial service professionals, attorneys, accountants, CLUs, CFPs, aren't able to teach unless they have a teaching credential. And so some uh, states are dealing with different standards and some of those standards are incomplete or out of date. Um, those states that haven't uh, put financial literacy on the required list need a law change that needs to be uh, um, put in place by a state legislator and then voted by the state that financial literacy be taught in school. Then the Department of Education needs to put together programs to teach the teachers to teach the students financial awareness and literacy. It's a big problem. So, but this is happening in some states. Are, are they making a difference in the states that do require it? Are those students doing better financially than from the states where they're not getting financial literacy courses? From the materials and information we've seen, and it is limited because this is really a longitudinal study. This is a study of young people just starting out till the time that they pass, um, what type of lifestyle they have, and, and um, are they passing with uh, an estate planning documents? Because over half the United States, the adults do not have any form of estate planning documents, which is really scary. That's like 120 million Americans. But the figures, um, Jordan, that we have are people have lower levels of credit issues, they have lower levels of um, problems uh, d dealing with the paying of their bills, um, they appear to be doing better financially. So even with some gaps in the education, uh, there is a significant improvement from the preliminary information we've seen. Very good. We're going to take a break. My guest this hour is Valentino Sabuco. He is the executive director and publisher for the Financial Awareness Foundation. You can find out more about it at his website, which is thefinancialawarenessfoundation.org. When it's time to make a hire for your small business, naturally, you want to find the best person for the job. Odds are that person is on LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs makes it easier to get matched with quality candidates who are most qualified for the position you have open. I tried LinkedIn Jobs and was amazed at how fast the perfect candidates I was looking for showed up. LinkedIn Jobs uses knowledge of both hard skills and soft skills to match you with the people who fit your role the best. People come to LinkedIn every day to learn and advance their careers, so LinkedIn understands what they're interested in and looking for, which means when you use LinkedIn Jobs to hire someone, your matches are based on so much more than just a resume. Sure, your LinkedIn job matches are based on skills and background, but also on the candidate's interests, activities, and passions. Matching lets you quickly get a group of the most relevant, qualified candidates for your position. That way you can focus on the candidates you want to interview and make a quality hire you're excited about. Customers rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering well-suited hires. Post a job today at linkedin.com slash money answers and get $50 off your first job post. That's linkedin.moneyanswers.com. LinkedIn.com slash money answers. Terms and conditions apply. We're always talking business. Talk to an expert. Call now, toll free, 866 472 5790. That's 866 472 5790. Voice America Business Network. Are you a business innovator or are you just sitting on the sidelines? 
Tune in every week for Coffee Break with Game Changers, presented by SAP. Host Bonnie D. Graham talks to a cross-section of the movers and shakers who are leading by example. They will share best practices and innovative ideas to keep you thinking and moving along with the best. Join us for Coffee Break with Game Changers, presented by SAP, Wednesday mornings at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 8 a.m. Pacific Time on the Voice America Business Channel. We're always talking business. Talk to an expert. Call now. Toll free. 866-472-5790. That's 866-472-5790. Voice America Business Network. You've been listening to The Money Answer Show with Jordan Goodman. If you have a question for Jordan or his guest, please call us now at 866-472-5790. That's 866-472-5790. Now back to Jordan. Welcome back to the Money Answer Show. This is Jordan Goodman, your host. My guest this hour is Valentino Sabuco. He is the executive director and publisher of the Financial Awareness Foundation. His website is thefinancialawarenessfoundation.org. Welcome back to the show, Valentino. Thank you, Jordan. Tell people some of the things they can get at that website, some of the free publications that are available there. Well, the, the, web, the website is a brochure website that tells us a little bit about what we're doing. That was what it was originally set up. And we see ourselves as kind of a, a cheerleader for the improving financial awareness and literacy movement, which we helped start about 10 years ago to help create a concentrated personal finance content media blitz around April, which is this month. Financial Literacy Month, and then six months later in October, which is a state gift planning awareness month. So during those months, we encourage financial service professionals, um, educational institutions, municipalities, uh, and other concerned parties to share with their viewers and audience uh, articles and content encouraging people to get their financial house in order, to get a financial plan, to get an estate and gift plan, and why that's important. And on our website, you can also download a set of personal finance publications at no cost that has a complete listing of the 75 uh, essential principles to smart personal financial management. This is a collection of financial doctrines that pertain to the 11 components of personal financial management, which is helping to get organized and in dealing with paperwork, what you own and owe, your net worth, your cash flow, how you make and spend money, and more importantly, maybe how you and your spouse look at money, um, then your employment benefits, which are a hidden paycheck. Those areas we see representing getting organized. Then in the financial planning area, we see life goals that are both financial and personal, um, that create a foundation for what you're doing for financial independence and retirement planning. Um, for major expenditures like buying a house, buying a car, funding kids' education, how you're dealing with investments, how you're dealing with taxes, um, and by default on insurance, risk management issues, and then estate and gift planning. When you go on the site and on these publications, you'll see them put together in um, a list of these principles in a form of an infinity sign because this is a lifelong process. It's a learning process and then a process of helping to make better informed financial decisions um, every day. And throughout that life, better decisions will equate to a better lifestyle and um, the highest probability of reaching and maintaining financial success. So there's something called the, your, your Financial Partner. That's the name of one of the things that you can download for free is what you're saying. There's a set of uh, personal finance publications. There's three of them in this set. Um, the system that we reference to help better manage personal finance is called Your Financial Partner. There's a guidebook that goes through each of the different areas that I just mentioned in detail and has a collection of forms that you can use to better organize your thinking, your planning, your finances, and to be able to begin planning for your future. 
Those of you that don't have a personal financial plan and hasn't had one done, this will give you an entry-level plan that uh, can give you a good, solid foundation for the rest of your life. You can use this with advisors. It's user-friendly. It also helps you better understand what your advisors, whether they be financial advisors or financial product providers, there's a big difference, um, are saying to you uh, if they're comprehensive or they're just component planners. And again, you can find out all this for free. Yes, all free at thefinancialawarenessfoundation.org, correct? Yes, yes. Okay, what, before we get into that, one of the problems you say with personal finance is that people procrastinate. What, why do people procrastinate and what is the penalty for not getting around to dealing with all these different issues? Well, uh, the penalty is not making informed financial decisions at the right time. Uh, and sometimes it's a good idea not to make a decision today if you're conscious of it and you wait to make that decision. Um, But you are making a decision if you put it off. A lot of people just find personal finance boring and intimidating. They spend more time planning what they're going to do over the weekend than they do planning for their future. Um, And that future when it's put off till tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow, it, it, it never gives you a chance to work. Um, like we talked earlier, for those that heard the comments on the uh, secret of time value of money and compound interest, that becomes very important. Um, but when people start thinking about retirement when they're a year or two in front of it, and over the years as a practicing financial professional. We had people come in at age 62 or 63 and say, you know, we're thinking of retiring now. We go, great. Um, what, when would you like to retire? Oh, maybe in a year or two. We go, well, how much money do you have? And oh, they have a very expensive house and they have really neat cars and they have a lot of toys. Um, and then they um, have 200000 in their 400, 401k plan. And we go, well, how much are you living on? And they go, well, we both have good incomes. We make six figures each. And, and, and you know, we, we kind of like to retire on, you know, maybe 150000 a year. And they go, well, you have 200000 in your 401k. How do you plan to do that? And they go, well, that's why we're here to speak with you. Um, well, to grow the amount of money you need to support 150000 a year for the rest of your life, um, in two or three years, short of lotto uh, or something like that, it's virtually impossible. Um, yeah. That takes a lifelong process. Um, so they procrastinate and then they want to catch up quickly is basically what happens. Okay. Absolutely. It's, it's not, you know, like a lot of things today, it seems you can take a pill and it solves the problem. But um, this is a, a lifelong process and a changing one. Um, think about life cycles. I mean, people go to school, they graduate, they um, might find a, a relationship. Uh, that relationship might end up into a marriage, might have kids, uh, might be a separation. It might be a new relationship, it might be new kids, um, it might be kids going to school, it might be um, pre-retirement, um, and then post-retirement, maybe taking care of elder parents. A lot of complexities, a lot of price tags, a lot of things that are always changing. So forward thinking is, is very, very important, um, but it's also something that in a lot of school and home um, activities, it's not really taught about or thought about at the level that it should be. Yeah. So let's get rid right into some of these essential principles and give some general tips on how people can do better. The first area is paperwork. Without going through all the details, how can people do better with the paperwork and organizing their personal finances? So well, let's talk about a couple of these essential principles. Um, one of those would be to organize your paperwork in, a, in, in such a way that if you got sick or when you pass away, someone can get to your important paperwork um, to help you or to uh, manage things until you get healthy. Uh, it also is important when you go into professionals to get financial input that you give them good information. If you don't give them good information, they're not necessarily going to be able to give you good answers to questions you might have. 
Another would be on important financial decisions, get a second opinion, just like in the healthcare area, when someone's recommending a major operation, um, it makes sense to get a second opinion from someone that sees things from different sets of eyes. Get an annual uh, credit report um, and credit score. Right now, uh, the, the credit reporting agencies have a weight on the kind of loans you get. So young people just starting out that get a home, if they've got a better credit rating, they'll get a lower interest rate on the mortgage. They get a lower interest rate in the mortgage, they have less in payments. Those payments over a lifetime can make the difference of retiring um, at one level or retiring at a lower level. Uh, Some other ideas there are protecting uh, your um, identity uh, and keeping your information confidential. Uh, and we're moving more and more toward uh, a digital environment, which for a lot of us um, means consolidating paperwork into hard paperwork into digital paperwork, which can be great, but we do need to protect that. Um, we need to protect it so bad people don't get our financial information, particularly our social security number, driver's license, key information like that, that in the olden days um, were readily utilized. And insurance companies a lot of ID use theft. our social yeah. security number for our member ID number. Yeah. A lot of ID theft going on out there. Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. So... All right, we're going to take another break. Uh, it's basically, we're saying to get your paperwork together in all these different areas, whether it be electronic or actually in paper. So if something's going to happen to you, they can easily kind of put your financial life back together again is the idea. Right? Absolutely. Very good. We're going to take another break. Uh, this is Jordan Goodman of The Money Answer Show. My guest this hour is Valentino Sabuco. He is the executive director and publisher for the Financial Awareness Foundation, uh, you can find out more about him and a lot of the free publications available there at the Financial Awareness Foundation.org. We'll be back after this. I'd like to tell you about a very enjoyable experience I just had cooking at Every Plate. It was a meal I did at home with my girlfriend Mary. Every Plate delivered all the ingredients we needed, and we made a skillet with pork chops topped with apple and green beans and sweet potatoes. It took about 30 minutes from start to when we actually served it. We also made a beef banh mai bowl, which had, came with carrots, rice, and cucumber. Both of these dishes were delicious. While other at-home dinner options cost about $10 a serving, Every Plate offers five chef-designed healthy recipes every week for just $4.99 a serving. Every Plate does the meal planning, shopping, and prepping for you, taking the time-consuming guesswork out of cooking. I found each recipe very easy to follow, which took the stress out of cooking dinner. I encourage you to give every plate a try. For six free meals across your first three weeks, you get free shipping on your first delivery. You should go to everyplate.com and enter Money Answers 6. That's Money Answers the number 6. This offer equals one-third off each of your first three boxes. That means you'll get 18 full meals for just $3.33 a piece for a two-person plan or 36 full meals for $4.16 a piece on the four-person plan. As a listener to the Money Answer Show, you also get free shipping on your first delivery. Bring the cost of your first box down to just $20. To try out this offer, go to everyplate.com and enter Money Answers 6. That's Money Answers the number 6. And enjoy a delicious, low-priced dinner in your own home. Stocks, bonds, investment opportunities, financial news, and talk. We can help. Call us now toll-free, 866-472-5790, 866-472-5790, Voice America Business Network. Moving forward can be difficult to do sometimes. There is always something going on. Many times, nobody else knows exactly what you're going through. If you are experiencing pain or loss, even something unexplained that is missing in your life, you'll want to tune into Go For It with host Joe Hausman. Joe and her guests will show you laughter and love 
Sometimes you just need something a little positive in your week. Make that spot Thursday mornings at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 8 a.m. Pacific Time on Voice America Business. We're always talking business. Talk to an expert. Call now. Toll free. 866-472-5790. That's 866-472-5790. Voice America Business Network. You've been listening to The Money Answer Show with Jordan Goodman. If you have a question for Jordan or his guest, please call us now at 866-472-5790. That's 866-472-5790. Now back to Jordan. Welcome back to The Money Answer Show. This is Jordan Goodman, your host. My guest this hour is Valentino Sabuco. He is the executive director and publisher for the Financial Awareness Foundation. You can find out more about what we're speaking about at his website, the Financial Awareness Foundation.org. Welcome back to the show, Valentino. Thank you, Jordan. So we've been talking about the essential principles of personal financial management. The next area is net worth, calculating your net worth. What are some things that people should do uh, to see where they stand as far as their net worth? Well, the, the net worth is a, a summary of what you own and what you owe, and then the difference between that is your net worth. Most people don't take a look at this very frequently um, and maybe only assemble it when a lender requires them to put something like that together for a home loan or auto loan. But a business utilizes this with monthly financial statements um, and annual financial statements. And so we think it's important to set up your household similar to a business and take a look at that net worth statement Um, and your cash flow, which we'll talk about in a moment, uh, annually. This will give you a great tool to see how you're progressing. So you can see if your debt's going up or your debt's going down, is your net worth increasing? Especially if you're doing some financial planning and looking for saving for that retirement nest egg, um, are you moving in the right direction? So annually doing a net worth statement and then comparing it with your uh, prior year is very important. One of the things you say as part of your net worth is you should avoid incurring debt by overspending and avoid high interest debt. Now, a lot of people are doing that. They're spending more than they're taking in and making up the difference with debt, and they're using credit cards and other form of high interest debt. If somebody has that situation, how do they avoid high interest debt and avoid uh, going into too much debt by overspending? Well, it, it, it's a complicated question because if they already have this, then there's some techniques and tools that I'll mention in a moment that can help reduce that. If they don't, we're encouraging people not to spend more than they're making. Just because you think you're going to be getting a bonus next quarter, don't spend the money before you get the bonus. Um, Just before you think you're going to get a job or a better job, don't go out and buy new clothes to support that. If you don't have the funds, be careful how you spend your money. Um, And don't use credit card or high interest debt paying vehicles to buy consumer items or luxury items or items to please you. Um, Find other ways of pleasing yourself if you don't have the money. Um, There's a lot of fun sports activities that don't cost money. There's a lot of social things you can do that don't cost money. Don't spend money to make yourself happy that you don't have. If you're already in debt and you're trying to get out of debt, Um, depending on how much debt that is and where that debt came from and where your overall net worth is, um, on on one extreme, you might consider going bankrupt um, and restarting over. Um, But some of that debt isn't something you can restart over. The certain tax laws that we have don't forgive debt, student loans aren't forgivable unless you have a hardship and, and you have some special energy you can put into maybe getting that uh, corrected. Um, and in the olden days, uh, going bankrupt had a certain negative uh, uh, persona around it. It doesn't seem to be there today. So some people, you know, utilize that as a, a lifestyle, but it's not really, you know, good. 
Um, if you are in a situation that you're trying to, to reduce that and, and, and get out of it so you can get ahead or to try to protect assets that you have that you don't want to, to disappear, you might look at trying to low, uh, negotiate lower interest rates from your lenders, um, whether that be credit card or bank loan or auto loan or mortgages, um, and always looking at finding a better rate um, to refinance debt is a good idea. Um, but you do need to be careful with the terms and conditions of that debt because it may have prepayment penalties. Yeah. Um, you also uh, should be looking at trying to set up sufficient cash reserves. This helps you re- keep away from going into debt. Uh, and, and it also is a tool to cover surprises. Um, cars break. Um, people get fired, people get laid off, companies have to close the doors. Things happen that you don't quite understand. Um, so creating a cash reserve is very, very important. And then being able to, to deal with that. Um, make sure that you're earning enough money um, to cover your um, expenses in your debt. If you do have significant debt, maybe you need to get a second job or another job. Uh, maybe the job's not paying enough. Maybe you need to figure out a way of getting paid more. Um, maybe you're not happy with your job. Um, that kind of leads into the next the next principle, which is cash flow. So what are some things people should do to improve their cash flow management? Well, th- looking at how you spend and make your money is very important. So as in a business, a business looks at their income and expenses each month so should individuals and setting up a budget so that they can live within it. Um, technology now has provide tools that can put you limits on your spending. Um, people that use credit cards and debt, uh, debit cards can also record those transactions in the old check register to see how much they're actually spending. So every time they do a credit card transaction, they can log it into their check register and take it away from their balance so they don't overspend. You can do the same thing with debit cards. Um, Credit cards that you incur credit this month and pay for it next month, as long as you keep your bills paid current and you have no outstanding balances, actually gives you 30 days of, in some cases even more, a float on that money. Um, but if you incur debt, now you can end up with 6, 7, 8, 10%, 20%, maybe 30% in credit card interest on that um, debt. That's not good. Yeah. And next area to talk about. Yeah. Yeah, we control move on next and spending is really important there. Yeah. Uh, the, the next area you talk about is employee benefits. So do you find a lot of people don't take full advantage of the employee benefits they're being offered by their work, their employer? Absolutely. This is a hidden paycheck. And in, in, um, a good percentage of our workforce uh, works for someone. And in working for someone, they have a paycheck and they have benefits. And those benefits um, can amount to 10, 20, 30 percent, in some cases more, of what their paycheck is if they were buying those benefits themselves. In our tools, the publication download set, there's a form set, there's an actual form within that set that can help you outline your employee benefits and put a price tag on them. Um, that vacation is a benefit. There is a price tag on it. That medical insurance, even if you have a copay, if you had to pay for that insurance all yourself, that's a, an expense. Find out what you're paying and then take advantage of them. Some of those benefits like 401k matching uh, actually give you money. Um, and if you don't take advantage of it, you lose money. So annually, uh, take a look at those benefits, see how they're doing, and manage them effectively. Um, And if you have a spouse, do it together uh, for each of yours. Yeah. The next one you have is setting goals. What are some of the most common mistakes that people make in goal setting? Not setting a goal um, or goals. Um, What what, is, what would you like to do with your future? Are you happy with your job? What type of day would you like to spend? Um, where would you like to go on vacation? How would you like to spend your leisure time? 
Um, what's important to you financially? Um, uh, do you have organizations or nonprofits that are important to you? Um, what is your uh, thoughts around uh, financial independence and retirement? Is that something that you're going to um, work toward? How much money is going to need to be done for that? Helping to set your personal and financial goals frames your whole area of financial planning. Um, so then how should you track, once you've set your goals, what's a way to track how, what kind of progress you're making towards achieving those goals? Well, the, and we encourage people to use a six-step process um, to help with their planning. And this six-step process starts with defining your goals for that particular area. This could be for uh, financial independence, which we'll be talking about in a moment. And then organizing your financial information to see where you are today at the beginning of this planning process. Then analyze your situation. Where you are today? Where do you want to be? What's the best way of getting there? So now you want to develop some strategies of getting from where you are today to where you are going, um, and then select the strategies that are best for you. Not all those strategies will be good or those that you like. Implement that plan. That's the fifth step. And then track and monitor your progress. Things like retirement plans would be something to be looking at annually. Um, something like staying on top of your budget because you've been overspending would be something that you're going to be doing monthly or maybe more frequently. Um, but this six step process, define your goals, gather and organize your data, analyze your situation, um, and if appropriate, discuss it with advisors, develop your strategy, then implement your plan and track and monitor your progress. It's a very simple, simple six step process that a lot of you use in business. Use it for personal. Um, it can go a long way to helping your future. Very good. We're going to take another break. This is Jordan Goodman of The Money Answer Show. My guest this hour is Valentino Sabuco. He is the executive director and publisher of the Financial Awareness Foundation. You can find out much more about what we're talking about here at his website, thefinancialawarenessfoundation.org. We'll be back after this. From the boardroom to you, Voice America Business Network. Are you a homeowner tired of making monthly mortgage payments with little progress towards paying down your principal? Does paying off your home in five to seven years without making larger or more frequent payments sound appealing? Paying off your home in full in five to seven years is really possible thanks to Truth and Equity's Mortgage Equity Optimization System, a money management approach that puts your money to work for you 24-7. If you own a home with some equity, have a decent credit score and verifiable income, you owe it to yourself to learn more about Truth and Equity's program. There's no need to replace your mortgage or refinance in many cases. The system works for new home purchases as well as current mortgages. Your home is your largest investment. Own it outright in five to seven years. Call Truth and Equity, 888-262-5540 or visit truthandequity.com, 888-262-5540. Jordan Goodman is an affiliate. He recognizes quality solutions, forming relationships to help improve the lives of his listeners. You've been listening to The Money Answer Show with Jordan Goodman. If you have a question for Jordan or his guest, please call us now at 866-472-5790. That's 866-472-5790. Now back to Jordan. Welcome back to The Money Answer Show. This is Jordan Goodman, your host. My guest this hour is Valentino Sabuco. He is the executive director and publisher of the Financial Awareness Foundation. His website is thefinancialawarenessfoundation.org. Welcome back to the show, Valentino. Thank you, Jordan. We're going through the essential principles of smart money management. The next one is major expenditures planning. So what are some things people can do when they're planning for buying a house, a car, college tuition, appliances, major kinds of expenses? The first thing is to avoid buying major expenditures that you can't afford um, and make sure that you prioritize them and that this is um, – 
dealing with wants and needs. If it's a want, make sure you can afford it. If it's a need, make sure you're getting into the most cost-effective way. A little shopping for major expenditures can save you a lot of money, especially with the great tools that are available today. Yeah. Um, Let's move on because we have a lot to cover here. So the next thing is investing planning. So people are seeing CNBC and they're just seeing lots of material about investing all the time. Most people don't spend a lot of time at it. What is the best way to kind of maximize your investing planning? Well, a couple of the essential principles, and there's about 16 of those that are listed, so we're only going through a couple for each of these areas, but make sure you understand what you're investing in. If you don't understand it, don't invest in it. Um, Also, avoid investing without clearly defined objectives and a plan. It's very important uh, for retirement plans to put together an investment policy statement and plan before any investments are made for the employee's money. You should do that the same personally. Develop an investment policy statement and plan before you do investing and use this as a guideline so you're not a kid in the candy store acquiring anything that you think you're going to make money on without really understanding it. And use professional advisors effectively. Um, so a lot of people look at that, but they don't know if they should get somebody who charges fees or commissions or fees plus commissions or the fiduciary who's not. How can you fi- figure who the correct investment advisor is? Say you don't have, you know, a million dollars, well, some huge amount of money. Well, there's, there's a big misunderstanding with the professional financial service community. Most professionals call themselves financial advisors, but we really have financial advisors that charge an hourly rate or a fee, and we have financial product providers which get paid when a sale is made. They get a commission. Uh, They're very high quality people. They're licensed in all states, so they can't sell financial products. So they're not low level. They're high level. But you as a consumer should understand the difference. And there's a list of questions um, in our materials that you can ask these professionals so that you can better understand what they're doing for you and how they're getting paid. If you ask the professional whether they're selling you something or providing advice, if I buy this product, how much are you going to get paid? That will give you some good insight as to what's going on. Um, Okay. The next area we want to go into is tax planning. So we've had a major change in the tax law recently. So what should people do that in many cases they're not doing as far as planning for their taxes? Well, most people think tax planning is the preparation of their tax return. It's not. It's the culmination of a year's worth of work before then. As you complete your tax return right now, it would be a good idea to project your income for 2019 and your expenses and find out what the tax is going to be on that. And if you're not satisfied with that, meaning it's way too much, look at what ways can you look at that to lower it. And if you're not a tax professional, check with one to find out which ways you can. Um, It's very difficult to look at tax planning if you're not a professional. The laws are changing, um, as Jordan just mentioned. But when you go online, a lot of tax advice is last year or the year before or the year before. And a lot of that advice isn't date stamped. So you're not really sure what rules you're dealing with. So a big, big, big key principle for young people, middle-aged and older people is before you enter any transaction that there's a tax effect on it, ask the question, what's the tax effects of this transaction before you do that? Young people that change jobs early on in their careers don't ask that question regularly and they have a 401k plan and their HR department says, what do you want done with your 401k? And they say, well, what can I have done? And they go, well, we can give you a check or you can roll it over. They say, fine, give me a check. Each year, millions of dollars are wasted in taxes. They pay a penalty to the federal and they pay a penalty for early withdrawal from the state, plus it's all taxable as income at their tax rate, which they could lose 30 or 40% of that money. 
So if they would ask the question, what are the tax effects of that, and know that they would have that tax bill, or they could roll it over and not have to pay any tax, it would save them a lot of taxes just on the 401k. And that's true with almost every kind of financial transaction from the sale of a home, the sale of real estate, the sale of collectibles, the sale and buys of stocks and bonds. Okay, the next area is insurance, or what you would call risk management. What are some of the mistakes people make in not getting either enough or the correct kind of insurance? Well, in, in, in some people feel, based on their goals and objectives, um, if they don't have everything insured, they can't sleep at night. Other people feel that if they paid the premium of having everything insured, they definitely wouldn't be able to sleep at night. So you kind of need to define how much risk you're willing to assume. And the risk um, for risk management covers a lot of things in life, not only property, but yourself, your wellness. Um, How much medical insurance do you need? What kind of deductible do you need to take? Um, The area of risk management is complicated and usually requires some professional input. Not all insurance agents are able to provide input on all kinds of insurance. There are two basic insurance agents. There's a property and casualty agent, which is licensed to sell uh, property insurance, homeowners insurance, automobile insurance, renters insurance, liability insurance. And there's a financial insurance professional that is licensed to sell life insurance, health insurance, disability, long-term care. Um, Those are different kinds of coverages. So the agent that you deal with will deal with this differently. Um, The best thing to do is to make sure you're covering the areas that you can't afford um, to protect, to to pay for if there was a loss. Yes. Before we close, uh, just talk a little bit about how people can get involved in the movement towards personal financial literacy. This is Financial Literacy Month. What are some things they can do to kind of make the movement grow even more? Well, uh, and there's one more principle or one area of estate planning. Uh, One of those areas for everyone would be to get their estate and gift plans put together. Um, And this would be a long way with, with, in this movement, we're encouraging people to talk to personal finances about to their family. So uh, a way of participating in the movement, and this is Financial Literacy Month, would be to talk to your kids or your parents, or your grandparents, to get their estate and financial plans put together if they don't have one. Um, To get a a estate plan done, an estate and gift plan, or a financial plan, a lot of the things that we're talking about today will be addressed, and it will go a long way to help you advance your financial literacy if you don't have one. If you have one put together years ago, it might need to be updated. So um, this is Financial Literacy Month. It would be a great opportunity to do that. If you're involved with an employer situation or a nonprofit or a school, encourage them to participate in the movement. Encourage them during April and October of each year to encourage their community to get their financial house in order with a current and up-to-date financial plan and then state and gift plan. So are you hopeful that things are going to be getting better as far as financial literacy getting better, or, or do you think it's going to be getting worse? Yes, we think it's, it's, it's the, through this movement. Now we're in the 11th year of this. Um, and if you go on our website and download um, our semi-annual magazine about the improving financial awareness and literacy movement report and magazine, you'll see that this has been growing not only domestically but internationally. Um, The movement uh, is launching in other countries, the Improving Financial Awareness and Literacy Movement uh, on an international level. Um, We think we can tie Improving Financial Awareness and Literacy to solving a lot of social problems from job creation to wellness um, to um, peace and nonviolence. Um, When people are better um, served themselves, when they have food on the table, when they have goods and services that they see that allow them to lead a nice lifestyle, it creates a much better standard of living. Um, right now with the BRIC nations, Brazil, India, Russia, and China, we're on way to doubling the buying power of the middle class globally. 
If we can do that in the next three to five to 10 years, this is something Wall Street has never experienced before. This can be absolutely fantastic um, for the equity markets and for the quality of life of people around the world. But that also means that this new growing middle class has to be very careful they don't get over into debt uh, because debt starts popping up and becomes too easy for some people to acquire. Indeed. Very good. Well, thanks so much. My guest this hour has been Valentino Sabuco. He is the executive director and publisher for the Financial Awareness Foundation. You can find out more, download all kinds of free, good material at his website, thefinancialawarenessfoundation.org. Thanks so much for being a guest on The Money Answer Show, Valentino. Thank you for your good services, and thank you, and keep up the good work, Jordan. Very good. Thank you very much. We'll be back next week with another edition of The Money Answer Show. Goodbye for now. Thank you for joining Jordan Goodman and The Money Answer Show. If you have a question for Jordan, please visit his website at www.moneyanswers.com. And be sure to tune in every Monday at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time right here on Voice America Business. See you next week.